Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The DRF bets race of the day for Friday, December the 1st is race number eight at Laurel. Let's take a look at this field. They're traveling six furlongs. It is an optional claiming race, 25,000 the optional claiming price. Now winners of two other then is the condition. We've got some sharp horses in this race and we also have some old class masters trying to regain their best form. A little bit of everything. A here. little bit of everything in here. I, I just found it really difficult to have a really strong opinion in this spot. It wouldn't surprise me if any six or seven of the 11 had a big chance of winning in here. I, I don't think I would settle for a price too short. Unfortunately, I think a horse that I like is going to be a little bit shorter than he should be. Field of 11 expected to compete in race number eight at Laurel. And if you're betting this race, if you're betting the Laurel card, heck, if you're betting overall, sign up to DRF Bets. You'll immediately access a $300 bonus at drf.com forward slash fall by using the promo code fall300. Remember, you can also access free formulator past performances of this race by heading to the race of the day event page on drf.com. So download them and handicap along with us. We're looking with the number one, Warley, who I thought ran really well on November the yeah. 5th. It was a sloppy track. I didn't think speed held well for most of that day. And this horse was involved in the lead with Showalter, who was also in this race. He emerged with the lead and was then run down late. I think this horse is really getting good. The problem is, boy, he likes to run second and third. Yeah, he he likes to kind of round things out. I think the positive, though, if you like this horse or you're trying to make a case for him, is that he doesn't need to be as aggressively ridden as he was in that most recent start. Two starts back, he won from two or three lengths off of it throughout. And I think that's the only way he's going to win here. I don't want to get him hooked on early on like he did last time. Get your tootsies cooked, and then you're up the track. But is that trip feasible from the rail? Probably Sheldon not. Sheldon Russell's got to be aggressive coming out of there, because if he's not, the possibility of getting shuffled sure. back or eating dirt or being blocked is certainly there. So Russell's got to play this right. He's a very sharp jockey. Worley seems to be in very good form right now. I think you have to consider him in any kind of multiple of race bet. The two is Willie B. Mine, who's a, who's a nice, hard-hitting horse. He's taking a little bit of a step up in class after winning a two-turn sprint at the Timonium Fair. He won that race with a 71 buyer. A horse has come out of that race to buyer 78 on the turf, but he's stepping up, and you know, I don't think his running style is right for this race. No, he's going to be forward, and I think there's going to be plenty of other speed in this spot. Not only Usually when I see this kind of a speed horse, you're looking for either a class situation where he stacks up well or a lack of speed. Well, guess what? He's moving up in class, and there's other gas. To me, it just doesn't work. The three Apollodoro de Damasco, sixth last time out and his first time off of the layoff, but Parks. The fifth finisher came back to rebound somewhat, running third at Parks at that level with a 72 buyer speed figure. I think his best chance is for hoping for a barbecue up front and maybe a pace collapse because I think from a buyer speed figure standpoint, really has to improve. Yeah, he's just not fast enough on paper. You're going to need something crazy to happen early on and just completely disintegrate. Fury of the Norseman is getting, I think, a really key class drop mm -hmm. here. He was third three back. He was claimed by Lacey Gaudet, who we know can get a yep. horse ready. And now this horse has had two route races, is cutting back to a sprint and should get a fast pace to attack. But he is dropping not only out of a $32,000 optional claiming, but moving from non-winners of three to non-winners of two. Maybe the double drop is all it takes to wake this horse up because he has back races. He has back races. And, and I mean, you just got to go back to earlier in 2017, back in February. You see some of the names in there that he defeated going six furlongs. Just called Ken. He's turned into a nice horse. And I know that was a start starting off point for him, but I wonder, the combination of getting back to a shorter distance, getting the class relief really from non-winners of three to non-winners of two, I think this is just a situation where I, I can understand anyone that likes this horse. My concern is, is he going to have way too much to do? Is he going to be run off of his feet early? Trainer Gary Capuano has two in here with similar angles, and we'll cue the formulator fact for both the five Showalter and the seven Jesum Jim. Both of these horses returning uh, off of a little bit of a layoff, now second back in dirt sprints, and Capuano has had good uh, luck with these horses. The problem with Showalter is, boy, Capuano's had a whale of a time getting him sound. It looked like he was finally turning the corner back in October of 2016. He was away for over a year. He got caught up in the pace duel with Worley last time out. All things considering, that was not a bad effort. He's going to be forwardly placed again. You have to expect a good performance. Yeah, he's going to be forward. I think he's going to be tighter, certainly, considering he needed that one off the long layoff. The problem is, again, with the other speed signed on in here, it's difficult for me to envision a race shape where he's able to put away the other speeds and then hold off the closers. Timeform US agrees with us as we queue up the pace projector for this race. The red bar indicates our friends at Timeform US believe this pace will be fast. They believe Showalter will get to the front, but he'll have to deal with his old nemesis, Worley. Yeah, and if that's the case, we saw what happened last time out. I can't imagine any difference. And then you've got that horse stepping up in class, who's not going to be far out of it either. Timeform U.S. says the six, any court in a storm at the absolute rear of this field, which could help him out if the pace is as fast as expected. Last time out at Penn National, though, 
voided claim. Yeah. Now a layoff since July. I wonder what we're getting off the bench. I wonder if it's starting off point. You see Edgar Prado, that's always a positive if Edgar's uh, listed as the rider. The concern that I had with one of the horses we just talked about earlier, Fury of the Norseman, is the same for this horse. You're going to get completely run off your feet. I understand you know, a fast pace is going to be beneficial, but coming off that layoff, I, I don't know what we're going to get. Jesum Jim is one of the back classers in here. Heck, he was in against Paige McKenney to kick off his 2017 campaign. Now he's going second off the layoff. He really didn't fire in that high roller whirly race. Personally, I've always liked him at slightly longer distances. I know he's won at five furlongs in the past. I think at this point in his career, while he has back races, he might need another another race under his belt and then a stretch out. Yeah, and you know what the thing of it is, in 2017, his form has just not been good, period. Now, maybe going back into this sort of sprint distance will help, but I agree that I think longer is better. High Roller was a stakes winner earlier in 2017. His first start as a three-year-old going seven furlongs at Laurel. He went away for a while after competing in four consecutive stakes races. He returned as a gelding. I thought he ran just fine last time out yeah. off the layup. I don't really think Fergal Lynch wanted to get to the bottom to him. He was riding him on the turn, but he didn't get the bat out. He finished evenly in between horses, ahead of three of these common foes. Now he's got that race under his belt. And you would think this outside post position is ideal. If Lynch is aggressive, isn't he sitting third outside of the two speeds ready to pounce? Yeah, and, and even if he's not quite third, you figure if you've got those three main speeds lined up to your inside, you're going to work out a beautiful trip in here. We know Laurel's notorious for wanting to be toward the outside of the racetrack. And I think second off the bench, he needed that one, in my opinion. I know he was all out for about three-eighths of a mile, but he stayed on. It was just a matter of he was probably a little bit tired. I think he's got a big chance in here. Lots of angles here for the nine school of hard rocks. We're going turf to dirt, second off the layoff, dropping in class and removing blinkers. The fact remains, though, that he is 0 for 4 lifetime on dirt. This is a horse that way back in 2014 yeah. was 9 to 2 against California Chrome in the San Felipe. It's incredible to see what this horse has turned into, and it just goes to show not all of them pan out the way you thought they were going to. Uh, I wanted to make a real case for this horse, picked him second. The dirt will find out if the dirt is really what he wants. He was facing so much better uh, quality up in New York in that most recent start. It was off of a layoff. We'll find out if he can step on dirt. The 10 J Rock, the 11 Mr. Benz come out of a common race at Laurel over a muddy track on November the 6th. Mr. Benz finished ahead of J Rock that day. J Rock ran a fig at Parks two starts back. Uh, J Rock's another horse. A lot of third place finishes on his resume, eight times third, but maybe third star off the form cycle. He's got similar tactical speed to High Roller. Yeah, I just, the problem is I don't think he's quite as talented as High Roller is, and that's why of the two, I would give the nod to him. Yeah, and Mr. Benz, uh, first off of the claim, ran second, 71 by but now the Flyers have been in decline for three consecutive starts. Also can't help but notice, boy, four of his last six starts, they've tried to get him on the turf and it's been taken off. Pick time for Friday's DRF Bets race of the day, the eighth at Laurel. We are both going with high roll, a little outside stalk and pounce action. What price do we need? The price is the problem. He's four to one on the line. I think he might be the favorite in here simply because of all the things that we laid out. He's a three-year-old, second start off the long layoff, potentially another forward move. And he got a fig in and his he got last a fig. race. I, I, just, I, t I almost wonder if he's going to be uninteresting from a betting standpoint. Maybe Take him five, five to, two. to two. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would take him. Maybe I try to hook him up with School of Hard Rocks, who I think is going to be completely overlooked just because people look at him and say he's not a dirt horse. Matt's going eight, nine, five, and one. I'm going eight, one, nine, and five. And Friday's DRF Bets race of the day. And again, if you are playing from home, no better place than DRF Bets to place your wagers. $300 sign up bonus at drf.com forward slash fall. Please use the promo code FALL300. An approximate post time for race number eight at Laurel on Friday is 4 o'clock Eastern. Good luck.